Hi, I'm Daryl Urbanski, and welcome to the Best Business Podcast. My mission is to help create 200 new multimillionaire business owners. How? You'll do better when you know better. In my interviews, you'll hear from self-made millionaires, seven-figure business owners, authors, and world-class experts sharing how they did it so you can too without experiencing the same obstacles they did. When your life and your business grow as a result of what you're about to discover, please call me and tell me about it. The number to leave a voicemail is 1-888-844-GROW. That's 1-888-844-4769. Long-distance charges may apply. Dial now to call me, connect, share your personal story of how my interviews have helped, or share your current challenges and frustrations so I can connect you with an appropriate course, coach, or help you if you connect. Now, if you like this interview, please share it with a friend you think will benefit. They'll appreciate it, and I will as well. You can also connect with me on social media. Look for Daryl Urbanski, D-A-R-Y-L, Urban Ski, U-R-B-A-N-S-K-I, and add me so we can be friends. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy what I've prepared for you right here, right now. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always. And today we are joined for our second time with expert guest, Chris Goegan. And Chris helps businesses grow 15 to 35% and then 2x to 30x with his revolutionary and proven engineered marketing. His clients are competitive and want to win and are believers in systems. They believe they should be doing so much better but don't know how to grasp it. They've also been burned to the tune of 26,000 or more by consultants or agencies promising the moon but delivering garbage. They know they need systems but don't know what systems or how to build the ones that actually work. With properly engineered growth systems, you can grow and have a life. So I've asked Chris to join us again on our show to talk about these systems, plus how to partner with companies instead of just working for them. So Chris, thank you so much for coming back. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, very well. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, to come back, Daryl. Uh, um, it's always, always a pleasure chatting with you. I know. We just had like a full hour chat before we even hit record. So for those of you coming here, we've right? been going for like an hour just catching up. Chris is a great guy. Um, I love talking to him. He's super good at what he does. An Ironman athlete, father of four, you know, a, a devout Christian and, and just a, a solid all around guy. Um, so it's always fun to have you here. So we talked a little bit before. Can we just go through kind of how you even got into business and marketing? Uh, we already have an interview. I highly recommend other people check that out. It's called what I called it. It was the it was the marketing mechan- master marketing mechanic interview. So check that one out for for more in depth if you like this. But can you just give us a little bit of like the 30 second you know background? It doesn't have to be 30 seconds, but how did you get into business and marketing? Yeah, you know, I I wish I could say it was by some master plan, and you know, I had this thing mapped out and. Follow this very strategic plan, um, but uh, it wasn't like that at all. It was like sheer dumb luck in the hand of providence moving me along. It was, uh, you know, I, um, I actually started my career off as an engineer. I have a degree in mechanical engineering from uh, um, it's now Kettering University, it used to be GMI General Motors Institute up in the beautiful city of Flint, Michigan. So I, I uh, you know, went there a degree in uh, mechanical engineering. I was working for Ford Motor Company. And I built high volume manufacturing lines to manufacture engines. And um, and then um, I moved to California in let's see, a few years after graduating and then went to work for an aerospace company out here, still as an engineer. I built parts for, you know, uh, space international space station program. <laughs> Hopefully they're still doing okay. Um, and fun, a bunch of different things. And um, and then I got into sales because I looked at where I was as an engineer, and I looked up how much money engineers made. And I had a good friend that was a few years younger than me that was making about five times as much money as me. As um, and it's like, wait a minute, I don't get right. this. So, so he was he was he was sales. So I said, you know, I should get into sales. I I can make that money. And then so I got into sales, selling um, what I'd been using as an engineer. And I would go into uh, to meetings, and they'd ask me to um, quote these different parts and components and systems. And I would look at it and said, I would basically say, you're an idiot. This, this, this is, this isn't what you need. This is what you need. Um, and I'd, I'd quote them on it and I would never get to work. And so I figured that sales was more than product knowledge. Uh, it's about people. So, so when I, I got, I got really lucky and um, I had a guy, uh, Jeffrey Hansler, who taught me uh, sales, uh, persuasion, influence, negotiation, um, uh, taught me about, you know, why people buy, 
and the, the emotional reasons and, and their, their values of why people buy. And then he said, Chris, he goes, now you'll be able to go into just about any industry and within a very short period of time, uh, be a top performer. So I did, and I did. Um, and and then I um, started a my own uh, consulting company. I was originally gonna, gonna buy a, um, a franchise before, but then I, um, as I dug into it, I realized, my, my gosh, why should I spend several hundred thousand dollars on this franchise when, right. you know, and, and, and so, so when I, I started, uh, started doing marketing consulting and, um, I, I would do the strategy and then we'd outsource the, the, the implementation work. And then I found that, like, I looked at things and, you know, the engineer in me <laughs> look at things and said, this is crap. Right. Um, you know, it, it could do better. So then I, I did, you know, the two mile deep dive into, you know, different, different traffic programs, AdWords, and then Facebook came along and Facebook and, you know, and, and then, and then it's like, um, I kind of saw that, you know, all these different platforms were all the same. They're all different, but they're all the same because platforms and technology doesn't buy anything. Facebook doesn't buy anything. Twitter doesn't buy anything. Uh, LinkedIn doesn't buy anything. Google doesn't buy anything. It's people. And it's, you know, it's back to the, the, the basic fundamentals of how people buy, why people buy. And then now with the internet, you know, how people buy online. And, um, so, so all along, though, I, I've, I've carried the background of, of an engineer and building high volume manufacturing lines. So, um, so I, I do the same now, but I build high volume manufacturing lines to manufacture sales. Right. So, we, so we help clients build a, an assembly line of sales that, that are scalable and they can grow it to, you know, what, whatever level, big or small that, that they want. Got it. Love it. So yeah. how do people buy and why do people buy? Um, well, why people buy is, is, is the most important thing. Um, and pretty much every client I work with, they, they just go to like straight traffic programs without like looking at the why people buy part and building their other selling system. So people buy for emotional reasons. And, 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 and there's, you know, like the two biggest things that get people to buy is either pain or gain. Um, the most powerful one is pain, you know, and they're sick and tired of being sick and tired of something. Then they're, then they're ready to add, you know, to make a change. So they, they buy off of um, you know emotional reasons, and the biggest thing is is just to get rid of a pain that they no longer need. Um, in in um, in this book, uh, "Sell a Little Red Hen, Sell," that Jeffrey Hanser, the guy that that had taught me about um, why people buy, uh, I've, this thing is really interesting. Is where he's, there's three main reasons why people buy, um, or three main buckets, if you will. One is one is for accomplishment. Um, one is a uh, second one is for peace of mind. And the third one is, is for uh, relationships. So accomplishment, accomplishment can be success, uh, power, um, money, uh, prestige, you know, any, anything along there. And then um, uh, peace of mind, that bucket is, you know, can just be that peace of mind, security, comfort. Um, and third thing, you know, being um, uh, relationships, you know, they, they, they want to do it because they, they want to look good, look good to their wife or to their friends or to, you know, um, uh, uncle. Um, Uncle Joe or you know Aunt Martha or you know the parents or something like that. Um, so so you know when you can identify the emotional reasons you know why, why people buy, um, then it becomes a whole heck of a lot easier to uh, to sell them to sell mm -hmm. them it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's something that really got drilled into me. I'd say last year was ha being comfortable describing nightmare scenarios for people, like getting into the drama of things, right? Like it's, you don't really want to, like what I mean is that I think in a lot of people's marketing, they want to talk about all the good stuff all the time, but they, they, they glaze over the, the nitty gritty stuff. And that nitty gritty stuff is the stuff that, you know, it hits people and it's what moves them to act. Right. It, um, like, it, it, it does. It, it, it absolutely does. You know, because it's like, you know, everything's not happy, happy, joy, joy, you know, right. life, life isn't, you know, like, um, uh, cotton candy and uh, painted ponies. It, it's it's not. There's you know it's like everyone's got got things in their life or periods of time or seasons in their life that are hard. You know um, you know wh whether it's you know uh, broken relationships, finances crumbled, um, you know uh, death of, of of a loved one or a parent or you know it's like or just things aren't just working out the, the way we, we plan or envision them to. You know and and. Um, and so, you know, while the happy, happy, joy, joy is what's propagated, especially on social media, you know, you look at Facebook, you look at Instagram, everyone's right. got these perfect lives. Right. But, but, you know, really it's like, you know, their life isn't perfect because 
their their ideal is this perfect life, and it's, I don't have that. So, so you know, they they have like long benchmarks and stuff like that. But but and, you know, but like but back to the point is is um, I don't like I don't sell people stuff. It's I help people buy stuff. Right. Ooh, and I like that. And 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 I I heard somebody say it's like the greatest thing that 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 anybody selling something or anybody in sales can do is help people make a decision. And it's a decision yes or decision no, but to help people make make a decision because if they can, so if they can confront something that's important to them, and make a decision yes or decision no, um, it 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 really helps them and it brings power in, into uh, into their lives. And so if you can get them to think deeply about important subjects and important topics, and get them to make a decision um, uh, before a decision is thrust upon them, then that. That to me, that, that that's a good place to be in, and it's, it's a great way to help people. Right, it's a great way to serve. People. And I love that because that's what it is. You're just helping people. It's not about trying to sell ice to Eskimos or Inuit or sand, you know, to an Arab. It's not <laughs> like right, like it's not about that. It's not forcing people things that they don't need or want. It's it's really it's about especially now we're so interconnected. People have in some ways become numbers because you can go and like, oh, I've got a bazillion contacts on social media. Like right, like people are kind of getting lost in the crowds. But it's really, it's really about helping people. It's about go. Okay, we have this big crowd. What's the the five percent that I can really help make a difference in their life in a meaningful and impactful way, you know? And how do I find more of these people? And that's really what the technology is allowing us to do. Like people talk about Facebook algorithm, you know, all it does when you train a pixel is helps identify the people who need your help most, who are most yep. likely to be in your situation, right? So that you yep. don't annoy and bother. And uh, that's the difference between spam. And, you know, a spam and a thoughtful message is the the, per, the recipient and the timing, right? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it a message, is the message to the right person at the right time or not, right? The difference between yep. salad and garbage is timing. Today it's delicious <laughs> salad, tomorrow it's I haven't it's heard garbage. that, but yeah, I like that, yeah. Right? Yep. So, I love that. So, all right, so let's talk. So, all right, how and why people buy for emotional reasons, helping people make a decision, uh, getting them to think about their situation before they're forced into something and identifying what is most important to them or maybe, you know, atta attacking might be the wrong way, but coming at it through accomplishment, peace of mind, relationships, seeing what appeal appeals to the majority of people in that market. Um, what's next? How do you, how do you, how do you go about when you work with a client? Like what are some of the first steps you take? Well, well so when I, when I work with a client, I, I really like it. Um, that there's really well, there's three levels. I actually, the reality is, you know, I'll, I'll say there, there's four levels. It's like um, that, that people can grow to. First level is like you know, get to a hundred thousand. Second is get to a million. Third is get to ten million. Fourth is get to a hundred million. So I, you know, I, I really focus on on you know, get to a million, get to ten million, get to a hundred million, and um, and it doesn't mean that you have to get to those levels. But the the projects that that I I work on uh, and like to work on are ones where there's a big market and we can grow and scale things to me like i i just love 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 the, those things you know I've, I've done a whole lot of time i've worked with tons of businesses where you know you know they're doing a few million or something like that and they want to you know 20 percent increase in sales okay well you know we could do that and you know do that with our eyes closed and sweat equity into it but but it's like the projects i like are, are, are growth ones you know get to a million get to 10 million get to 100 million and grow markets and, and and really help make a difference in that market like serve that market better than anybody else is serving is serving that market so it's you know the biggest thing is just you know really identifying like you know is there a market is it a growth market um, knowing if it's a growth market is a, is a really big thing like is a market growing at 10 percent or more if so then it becomes a lot easier if if not then acquisition costs uh, can get really high cost per lead and and your client acquisition costs and then so you got to have a really some really good conversations about economics of uh, of of making it work. Um, so so then and it's really it's like you know when you've got a market and a growth market and you, you determine that you know you're going to serve them better than anybody else, then you want to become intimate with that market. You want to know everything about the market and um, have a really deep understanding of it. <laughs> like I, I joke around with clients, it's like you want to know your customers so well. That that they're gonna file a restraining order on you if 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 they see you peeking <laughs> through their window one more time. One more time. 
you, you know, um, but but it, it, that's that's really important to really have a deep understanding of them, you know, and then because then once you do that, then, then you build out your uh, um, your selling systems. Um, and and actually, I'll, I'll regress a little bit even before that. I, I love uh, a good friend of mine, Michael Gerber. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, E-Myth. Mm. If you don't have that book, E-Myth it's Revisited read, yeah. by Michael Gerber. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's um, I think it's like the number one selling business book of all time. Uh, um, anyhow, he I love his simplicity of the way he looks at things. And if I was standing in front of you, I I, w I would be pushing my my thumb, my index finger, or my middle finger on on, on the table um, in, in form of like a three legged stool. And and so um, the three legs are lead generation, lead conversion, and client fulfillment. Lead generation, lead conversion, and client fulfillment. The three legged stool. If you're missing one of the legs, the the, the stool's going to crumble and fall. So you got to get leads, you got to convert leads in, in, into customers or clients, and then you got to deliver, um, which is a client fulfillment. So if you really want to scale to any of those levels I talked about, the first place to start is, is really on your client fulfillment. You got to have a system that that's, uh, uh, replicates and duplicates what you do without you. Um, mm. and, you build, and, and so you go backwards or frontwards. So you build out your client fulfillment systems first, keyword is systems, because you know, a lot of a lot of guys I work with, you know, say, you know, a guy he's he's doing, you know, um, three four million dollars, and he's on his way to hundred million now. Um, you know, he he had a point where he's like, hey, look, you know, I got here just through pure sweat equity. I know there's a big market, but I cannot get there the same way I got here. You know, right. meaning I worked like crazy to get to three three four million. I can't get to ten million even doing it's the same thing. Just not enough hours in the day, right? And, and, and there's not enough sanity in, in, in the bank account, you know, and, and then and you would have no marriage, no relationship, no, you know, no nothing. And, and, and you and I have, have talked offline about, you know, like having a life and the importance of having a life and not making, you know, not sacrificing, you know, your life uh, on the altar of success. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, like, I love my wife. I love my kids and I want to spend time with them. I don't want to be, you know, spending 80 hours a week working right. and zero time with them, you know. Um, so, so, you know, so, anyhow, so, so you work on, if you want to have systems. So, so you see so the business working for you. And this is really like the key question is like, do you want to have a business that works for you or do you want to work for your business? And, you know, if you, you know, stop and think about that, meditate on that thought for a minute, it's like, well, you know, if you say, I want to have a business that works for me, meaning you can take time off and you can do things you can, you can, you, you know, and you can, you can travel around the world or you can just take time off and just go to the beach and, you know, whatever. Um, so, so you work on your client fulfillment systems first. Um, so then, so you, your deliverable is a five-star deliverable that works whether you're there or you're not there, and it works just as if you were there every time, you know. And then, and then once you have that, then you work on on your uh, lead conversion systems and then your your lead generation systems. If you do it the other way, if you start with traffic, which is what everybody in the world does, all you're going to do is you're just going to have a massive mess on the on on the back end that's going to be very expensive to clean up. Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. What I love most, and I've I've come up. Um... In a previous interview, and I've I've used this ever since one of our first interviews, and I've used it ever since. Is when you look up entrepreneur in the dictionary, and I've done it, put it into Google right now, and it says a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses. That's mm -hmm. it. it. What it doesn't say is a person who answers the phone, mops the floor, takes the order, delivers the service, does the bookkeeping, right? Like that's not it. A business is organizing that. It's like if there was an oil spill in your backyard or in your neighborhood or there was a huge fire that burnt down a bunch of people's houses and you organized the groups of people to clean up the mess and rebuild, right? And by organizing it, you know, you kind of sit at the head chair, so to speak, because you're Everything kind of flows through you, so to speak, but you're not necessarily the one that has to do all the work. You're making sure that things are built to code, that the right. You're making sure that the building inspector is there on time. You're helping orchestrate it. You're the conductor of the orchestra, and by doing that, everybody knows their roles, everyone knows their places, and things can flow without you being present, right? Because you've built this system. You've you've taken yep. your brain and you've you've created a physical version of that through people and networks and checklists and processes and balances and checks, and that way that's what you've done, is you've created this beautiful little machine that kind of works without you. Yeah, absolutely, and, and um, so beautifully phrased. Um, and, you know, and, and also too, it depends where, you know, people listening, where they are in, in their cycle. Like, because I've seen some people just starting business off, they try to have too much stuff delegated, um, but um, they don't have the resources. You know, to have people so so like you know, if someone's just starting off, understand that you know you have to have crazy time. 
<laughs> you know, it's like where, where you're wearing 40 hats, you know, because you need to get sales in the door and you need to, you know, you're still figuring out what you're selling and who you're selling it to and how you're going to sell it. And, you know, you're still figuring like what you are and what you aren't. And that kind of happens until, you know, I, I, I found that, you know, I don't, I don't know um, if your experience is match or not, Daryl, but, you know, I found that, you know, once companies cross a million, they've kind of figured a lot of that out, who they are and who they aren't. Um, and they start getting a pretty good idea on it once once they've got to a few hundred thousand dollars in, in sales. But it's like, as they get closer to a million, they, they, but before then, like when, when, I, when I was an engineer, we used to do a lot of work with this company called AFM. And these guys are like uh, master craftsmen, like incredible machinists and mold makers. And, and um, so I remember asking my engineering manager one day, it's like, what does AFM stand for anyhow? <laughs> he, he, he smiled and laughed and says, it stands for anything for money. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm like, huh? He goes, yeah. He goes, when they started, they'd knock on the door and uh, they say, you got any work? And he goes, and I would say, well, what do you do? He goes, well, we'll do anything for money. <laughs> and, and and so so if you're in a startup mode, you know you're you kind of got an idea of what you're doing. Well, you're in that AFM mode. You're in like, hey, I'll do anything for money. Right. And then and then as you do that, and as your sales grow, that then, then you realize, hey, you know what? I want to do more of this and less of that. Yeah. Um. And then once you once you've got that figured out, which is one of the hardest things to do, once you've got that figured out, hey, this is what I really want to do. Um. This you know, this is my product or my service. This is what it's really all about. Then then you're ready to start scaling stuff. Yeah. 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 That's such so well said because a lot of people, they don't even know their niche until they get going. And, you know, and you have to, anytime you do something often enough, a pattern emerges. So you yep. can't really tell until you've, you're transacting enough business that you can really dial in and you can't scale garbage, right? You can't scale hope. <laughs> you have to scale a meaningful thing. And that's where you tap into trends that are affecting large herds of people. Right. And that's where you can really start to have an impact on the world is when you start identifying what's going on with large groups of people. And of course, Chris and I, we're talking about businesses that are there to help people. We're not selling sugar. We're not selling cigarettes and guns and right like alcohol. We're not selling things that ideally that are causing problems. We're dealing with companies that are going to make a difference. Right. Because we've we've got kids. We want to have a better world for our children after, you know, they come and go. But this is a fantastic place to start. So I love this. So you have to figure it out in the beginning. Maybe you are the one that's doing all the work because you have to figure out if it's viable. Really, you only have three resources. You have time, money, and knowledge. But it's very rare people have all three. So if you've mm -hmm. got money and knowledge but no time, then you can delegate early because you, you don't have the time, but you have the knowledge and the money so you, can, you know what to tell them to do, right? how to inspect what they've done, and you can afford to pay them to do that. If you don't have yep. the money, but you have the time and the knowledge, then you've got to do the work yourself. So it's these three resources. And that's why a lot of companies go for venture capital. They sacrifice equity in their business. And, you know, it's a catch-22 because I know people that got – I know a guy in Canada. He got a couple million, I think, for his VC money. He built this company, I want to say, to $10 million, maybe more. They sold it. And he said he would have made – if he only grew the company to 10% of its growth, of its size – without the VC capital and sold it, he would have walked away with more money than he did with the sale as it was that way. So you got to be careful what yep. your goal is. If your goal is to sell it, you know, be careful how you get into it. That's just a caveat. But if you're building something because it's out of passion or it's what you want to do or whatever, even if you do plan on selling it, VC capital can be a good way. It's that time, money, knowledge kind of seesaw. And that's where you figure out. And if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what industry, you don't know all that stuff, you got to figure that out. You know, and mm -hmm. then the, where the, where are those resources going to come from? If it might not come from you, but it's got to come from somebody. So, yep. so, all right, client fulfillment, checklists, uh, you know, standard operating procedures, balances and checks, feedback surveys, all that sort of stuff. What about conversion? How do we, how do we convert leads typically? Yeah. So, um, converting leads is, and it, it depends on, on, on where you are. You know where the business owner is like in the cycle they so if they've already got a business that that's that's you know creating some revenue say they're you know several hundred thousand dollars or a million or a few million dollars or even more than that it's like um a lot of times they'll have developed a way to a way to sell it um and they they usually have like a way that they get business a lot of, a lot of times it's from referrals or just from just a lot of shoe leather um but if we want to we want to build again. We want to build scalable selling systems, and um, so in order to do that, you you have to first you know ha have a selling system you know in place, 
and um, and even before that, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, regress for for a moment here. It's like entrepreneurs are are typically um, great at getting things going, mm-hmm. and they're typically awful at at scaling things because they're just used to doing everything and just doing whatever it takes, however it takes. And so there's a transition that that has to happen mentally mm-hmm. where they go from the doer of everything to to then creating and building systems because you can do everything, but you're going to be capped on, on on your growth and what you can do. Um, so you know you might be. You might be capped at five million. You might be capped at ten million. You know, may, you know, maybe, you know, maybe more than that. But you're going to be capped, um, and so you have to transition from being the doer of everything, the guy that makes things happen, to having systems that 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 do that. And it can be it can be a difficult transition because it's a different personality type, you know, to come in and do that. Mm-hmm. So a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs, what they do is they'll create a wake. So you know, they're a boat going across water, and they'll create this big wake behind them, and and then uh, they'll need a systems person to come in and organize that the wake and the mess that that, that they've made, and and organize it in a way uh, so they, they can scale and grow. Um, so, um, so it, it's it's also an, an emotional thing um, being able to change that course because I've worked with some people that have wanted to scale their companies, but after we started on that path, emotionally they couldn't ha- they couldn't handle it. Yeah. Because it's guilt of making money for doing nothing. That's what they feel like. I'm not doing anything. I, I totally get what, you, what you're saying. This is and such control. a good point. Yeah. 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 And, and control. control. And, and control. because because you have to give up the control, you know, and you have to. So you have to rely on on systems and people. You have to have great systems and you know the right people in the right seats doing the right things, you know, uh, in those systems. And so so if you can't give up that control, then you know then this is why you get businesses will look to scale, and then they've got chaos. Well, because partly because they, they haven't had you know growth systems in place, mm-hmm. or they haven't known known how to to organize and how to grow. So they, they start growing or trying to grow, and then they're like, you know what? I've got more headaches now. It's like, and they look at their partner. It's like, like, hey Bob or hey Sue or hey Mary. It's like, remember when it was just us? Mm-hmm. Remember how much simpler things were? Let's just go back to that, you know. And then and then they they, they go back to you know to, to where they were you know before. Yeah. Um, you know when when just. Knowing, knowing, you know, a, a few things and executing those things, and and allowing themselves, like, like the, um, the emotional, um, let, letting go of that control, you know, is is uh, you know, is difficult. But once you can overcome that, then you can really, really take things to a, a level you couldn't even imagine, yeah. like before. Yeah. Yeah. And, Go ahead. Sorry. And, and yeah, yeah, no, no, and, and so and so, um, uh, I was going to bring this back to to the question you asked about, you know, about the, the lead conversion. But before I do, is it sound like, like like you had something on your mind? Well, I just think it's such a great point to bring up. Like I'm I'm smiling on my face because I'm going through this with some clients of my own right now. They have a commercial uh, cleaning company, right? So they do like janitorial services. They have a very specific couple of uh, niche that they're after. And I've gotten them some systems and a team. And it's funny because I before this interview, I had a call with them. And it's funny because I was talking with them. And they're like, I, I don't know how I could work at night like that. Like, they just can't do it anymore. Like, now they've got this new life set up, this new lifestyle. They, they, they can't, they don't know how they did it the other way for so long. And it's, I'm going through it with my girlfriend because she's got mm-hmm. an agency. She's got 15 staff and that. And, you know, and yesterday we kind of took the day and we went with, took our daughter. We went and saw a movie, went for a long walk with her dog on the beach. And she was having issues of feeling guilt because she's like, I, I feel like I need to be doing something in my business. And I'm like, okay, well, let's like, is this, is this, are you generating leads? Yes. Are you following up with leads? Yes. Okay. Are your clients getting, yeah, it's, it's, it's all taken care of. Like, it's okay. We can take today. Like, it's, it's okay. It's okay to step away. It's, it's okay. You can let go. You, you can let go for a day, right? Like, it was just great. And it's just, it's a funny, it's just, it makes me laugh. Cause I know I go through it too. And I, and of course, um, Anyways, it just made me laugh because it's it's very well articulated, and you have to jump in from time to time, right? That's why you're you are freed up so you can jump in where the, where there's a gap and a hole, and that's where people have to realize you set this machine up, you've got your systems in place, your people in place, but somebody gets sick, someone's child is in the hospital or something, and now they're not there. There's a gap there. You are there to either jump in temporarily, plug that leak, or you're there to get somebody else to plug that leak, right? Like you're, you're there to see it from above that perspective, that bird's eye view and figure out how to tweak and optimize thing to produce not just profit, but to produce better results for your clients. Right. And this is something that's I think starting to emerge more and more in the world today is companies that have purely sought out profit, you know, as the world becomes more connected, 
some of the, the, the demons of that mindset, you know, that, that fallacy. I mean, Elon Musk is a great example, you know, because he's even told people like, look, our stock price might not keep going up. Like our goal is not profit. Right. Like when you have a jet, the goal of the, the you don't the goal isn't to get as much fuel as you can. The goal is to travel from A to B and have the best time doing it and do it in the best time and just get better at that. And the, the fuel is just a means to get there. And the same thing with a business. Like what is the higher purpose for your business? If you are doing a million dollars in sales. You're not just in it to do a million dollars. You're doing something more meaningful than just collecting money from people and collecting mm -hmm. the money is a byproduct because. I'm going to give you money, right? Like people pay in relation to the size of the problem you solve. So if, if I just need to get from A to B in town I, and I have all day to do it, I can split the costs with 30 other people and take public transportation. But I need to get there faster than I can pay for a taxi. Well, I want to be able to come and go at my ple as I please. Well, then I got to buy a car, right? And it's like increasing price points. Yep. yep. So. Um, yeah. And, and, and profit is a great thing. Being profitable is a wonderful thing because, uh, I, like, I, I don't know, I don't know about you, but, um, but my wife, she likes it when we have food. Yes. <laughs> um, and my my kid my kids like it when we have food too. <laughs> Imagine right. that, you know, like, right. it's like so so we couldn't have food unless my business was profitable. And right. and and if your business is posting a profit, that's a good thing because because what, what what that's what that's showing is that you you're delivering something of value to the market. They recognize it. They want it. They're, they're willing to, to pay for it. You know, do that exchange, and you're a good steward of of, of the resources that, that you've been given. Meaning, you're able to provide something of value in exchange, and you're able to keep your costs, you know, un, under control. So, so, so now you've got profit, and and you obviously can't grow on scale, you know, without you know without profit. Um, so profit's not profit's not a bad thing. It, it's it's just it's just you know like if profit becomes uh, becomes your god, then you know, then then you'll you'll crawl, you'll do anything for it, and that's where it's not. That's well, where it's not. Good. And the yeah. other thing is, uh, markets by definition are unknown and unknowable. Like you can get mm -hmm. an idea of it, but it's only an estimate. You can't actually know the market because yeah. there's so yeah. many factors at play, right? So it's really we're all when people talk about a market, it's the it's a vague concept for what we can tell, but we really don't know. They're unknown and unknowable, but everybody recognizes excellence. And so excellence needs to be the goal because the market rewards excellence, right? Absolutely. The, the better provider. Yeah. So excellence needs to be your God and the money will follow. And the money, the profit left over is that people need it, want it and enjoy it so much that the way you've organized things, there's a surplus. So that way you can keep doing it. Like it's one of those things like, oh, that was a great program, but why did it dry off? Oh, because there wasn't enough money. Like the, people vote, people will pay lip service to anything, but when they spend with their wallets, that's like, that's the proof. That's the real vote, right? So. That's, yeah, that's the most important thing there, yeah. Exactly, so, but yeah. in growth, sometimes there, it's tough to maintain profit in growth because when you're growing, depending on where you're set up, like I love how you're talking about systems for growth. Because when you're setting up, if you aren't set up for growth in advance, you're investing a lot of the profit back into hiring, training, new software, new whatever, right? Advertising, new new things to, to try to manage the growth and, and, and keep up with demand. And that's where you hear companies that they grow themselves out of business because they, they get into a cash flow crunch. All of a sudden, they're, all their account receivables are behind. They can't pay staff and things, right? So you got that's a really important teeter-totter that you have to try to balance how to grow and maintain your profit at the same time without, you know, it's just, it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah because, cause and you're absolutely right. Because as you grow, you, you need to add more layers on, because if it's just you, you know, if you're delivering a service, it's just you, you know? Um, but then when you start hiring someone to replace yourself doing the work, well, now you've got salary and you need to make right. profit on top of that. And then, right. and then as you grow, then you need a manager. And as you grow, you know, you, so there's more layers and more people, more right. things. So, yeah, so so understanding your your profit um, uh, model is is super important. Yeah. Um. And, and um, you know, and and so so like like you asked a question about you know lead conversion, like um, you know, philosophy that, that I have with lead conversion is is we're we're building a growth system. So we say we got the client fulfillment in place. Now we're we're building the growth systems, uh, um, and we're focusing on lead conversion or your selling system. So, so so I, I believe in this aim small, miss small methodology. Where, where it, it's um, uh, we start we start with the same small um methodology. And I don't know if you ever saw the movie The Patriot by Mel Gibson. No, but it's um, okay, I'm with you. 
Yeah, so 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 in it there there's a scene. It, it's set. It's like Revolutionary War, um, and it's, there's a scene where the British came and they uh, kidnapped his son and his oldest son. They're going to take him and hang him, and so Mel Gibson takes his uh, his two boys like a nine, they're like nine and ten or something like that, and he sets up an ambush, and he puts them on top of this hill, and, and he says, "Remember what I taught you, boys? Um, when when they ride through, remember what I taught you?" He goes, "Yeah, Dad, aim small, miss small." Meaning, if you aim at the guy in the horse, you're probably going to miss him. But if you aim at the third button down on his jacket, you know, you might not hit that button, but you're going to hit him. You know, and, and so, so when we start um, building our, our selling systems, uh, we, we, we start with this aim small, miss small. Meaning we've got a very focused target, you know, a very focused like person or persona or, or avatar or whatever word you want to use. It's very specific market person segment that, that we're, we're, we're aiming. And we've got very specific because we because we um, we've done our due diligence. We know why they buy, um, and we know what's important to them and what's not important to them. So we've got a very clear message to that very tight market. Um, and so 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 it's like we're, we're snipers, you know. And and so so um, we've got a very very specific message to a very specific market, and and then we we do very small metered traffic um, to that to make sure we've got our conversion systems working. Mm. So, so if we can spend a dollar, you know, and get a good return on that, whether it's, you know, like a dollar turns into two, three, four, five, whatever the magical number is for, for that bit for the business. Um, once we've got that in place, then then we can start expanding out. So, so if you picture like a, you know, bullseye, like in an archery target or a dartboard, you know, we start with that bullseye. When we hit that, we've got a good ROI. Then we start expanding out in concentric circles. We start growing, measuring our ROI the whole time through. Um, and then when we hit a point of diminishing return where we're not getting the ROI, that then we just we just ratchet it and, and, and tighten it up a little bit. So we're so we're, we're back in the, in the positive zone because when you're when you're just hitting at the bullseye, it's not a big population that you're able to get. You need to you, you need that to get your return to expand out to hit a larger population. And um, and 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 here here's something with with conversion systems that um, most people don't like don't look at them like like this. Like I see things as people buy stuff. I, I don't see things as Google buys stuff or Facebook buys stuff or LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever, direct mail, TV. You know, those are media. Those are ways to reach the people that buy stuff. It's living human humans and beings um, that, that buy stuff. It's you, the me. We buy things for, for emo these emotional reasons. So we, we build these selling systems, and, and, and what we do is we've got a way to, you know, reach people, plant the initial seed or, or, or get the initial hook in there, that then gets our initial interest and starts growing that interest and pulls them into our selling system where we can expand that interest and and uh, and eventually like get them to buy. When we've got that selling system in place, all we do is we just add in, we plug in all these different traffic sources. And what we do is we put a meter in front of each traffic source to measure the effectiveness of it, whether it's profitable or not profitable. Because again, we're building a selling system around people and our market that buys stuff. And then we're using these traffic systems as the media or the medium to reach these people mm. and you know and so 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 to me there's no difference from google to facebook to linkedin to any of these things there's, they're all the same they're, they're the same in regards to um their way to reach our market now granted the interface is different you know and how much space you have so like if you're using like google adwords you know search you know you've got small you got small real estate you know you've only got like a, you know um you know, just a handful of words, you know, you know, you can put out. If you're doing a blog, if you're doing like a, a an article post or, or a, um, on Facebook, you know, you, you can make that a lot longer. You know, but 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 the principle is, is people will give you a second, one second initially, you know, which will then, if you capture their interest, they'll give you three seconds. And if you capture their interest there, they'll give you 30 seconds. And if, and if, you, if you hang on to their interest, then they'll give you five minutes, and they'll give you 15 minutes, and they'll give you an hour. You know, um, and then and then they'll buy, and then they'll you know buy more and refer people over to you. But it starts off with you know, okay, well, what are my initial hooks that can gain me those one to three seconds? And then what's the message behind that that I carry on the conversation that can grow those three seconds to thirty to sixty seconds that will lead to five minutes? So this is your whole selling system. So we dissect the whole selling system up, and then we just look at the, at the, the media that we're using. It's like, well, how much time you know how how much real estate do we have for our initial hooks? You know, and so so we plan our initial hooks on all these traffic sources. We reel them in, bring them into our selling system, and we when we have our selling system dialed in on that aim small miss small methodology, we know it works um, for our core market. So then we we add these new traffic sources in. 
we just have have a measurement in place just to know if they're all profitable individually or not. Mm, agreed. I love that. So well articulated because it's all like you said, aim small, miss small. That's Claude Hopkins in uh, Scientific Advertising said, "Let the thousands tell you what the millions will do." Because whether you're mm. buying traffic online or offline, you 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 pay for it in thousands CPM cost per mill. Mill is French for thousand. So it's yeah. pay per thousand impressions is how you typically pay for advertising. That an impression is a view. So how many eyeballs, sets of eyeballs saw your ad? That's how you pay for it in the thousands. So you let the thousands tell you what the millions will do. And if you get it dialed in, like you said, that bullseye, you can start scaling it up. And so I think that's fantastic. That's a great approach to lead conversion strategies. And like you said, the system, the, the, the tactic might change, whether it's in person or on stage or a webinar or a page or a video. The tactic might change, but the, the principles and the strategy are the same. And that's all about knowing the reasons why people buy, the emotional reasons why people buy, you know, and having a time constraint around it and then things that support the believability in that your product will produce or your service will produce the result that they want and social proof if you can add that in too, pepper that in as much as you can. I think that's a fantastic way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, cause I mean, this is such a fantastic call. Like there's just so much in there. People probably will want to listen to this to a couple of times, uh, listen to this mm -hmm. a couple of times because we referenced some fantastic books talked about uh, how the goal is first to get the fulfillment set up because you want to make sure you can bury yourself. If you got to, you know, Oprah's killed businesses. They call it the Oprah effect because they'll get put on Oprah and then they'll have so many visitors to their store. They're not prepared for. They get buried in negative reviews of people that, you know, the yep. service was slow. The product wasn't properly put together because they're pushing them out so fast. They weren't ready for growth. And so the negative reviews kill them. So a lot of people, like you said, they're like, oh, if I could just get a million people to buy my thing right away, well, you got to be careful. It's it's that seesaw of sales and deliver, like sales and fulfillment. Because if you can't fulfill you and you take on too many orders, you know, it's better to be oversubscribed and then in a position where you have to tell, put people on a wait list, right? Like that's a yeah. much better position to be in. So Always be prepared to deliver first. The sales conversion, that's getting into the details. And what are some of the research tools you would recommend for getting into the, the emotions and the buy buttons of a market? Yeah, yeah um, great, great question. Um, you can go to, so there's some great online, you know, online tools like Amazon is a great place. You know, if you, if you look at like books on subjects um, and, and and then you uh, you look at the, the like the uh, the comments on there. Um, and the reviews on there. So you look at the one star reviews, look at the five star reviews, and you get some good, some good emotional language um, that, that people have on there. You, same thing if you know you can look at you know Yelp reviews or things like that. Um, and see what people are saying about about competitors in the market or the market. Um, and my favorite way it has been and is to talk to people. I just like I, I'm highly curious. I love I love like talking to people, I love finding out about people. Um, and so I love to get people on the phone or, or face to face and just ask them questions, like ask them about, you know, if um, what, they, you know, what they love or what they hate, you know, if, if the product or service like fulfilled that or what's, you know, why they're using it, what's, you know, what's missing or what would they alter, what would they do differently? Um, you know, I just want to get, I want to get their, their feedback. You know, why did you buy? What caused you, what was the trigger event that caused you to buy? Um, what else were you looking at? You know, and why, why did you choose mine? Mm. Um, you know, so I love that because I, I can get, I can probe deeper and based off what they say, I, I can, I can get uh, um, good emotional reasons. You, you can do surveys. Surveys are fantastic. And then surveys are a great way, you know, to lead into like phone conversations with people where you can just have a conversation and really understand them. Like, oh, hey, help me, help me understand your situation. What was going on that, that you didn't like, that, that you wanted to change some things? What caused you to look? Was there a triggered event that caused you to look? Tell me about the emotions behind that. What were you feeling? What were you experiencing? What, what did you want to get rid of? What were you envisioning? What did you look at? What did you try? What worked? What didn't work? Um, and what, why did you end up settling on, you know, buying from us? And, and then how was that experience? That's great. Nothing will ever beat talking to people in today's day and age of technology. I think a lot of people want to hide from that. They just want, right? They just want money to show up in their bank account. And they can go to the beach and just party all day. But I think that that's really powerful because all a company is is a group of people solving the problem of another group of people 
with a product or service that they that they offer. That's all it is. You're a group of people yeah. helping another group of people. So befriend those people. And if you don't like who your customers are, maybe you need to look at changing your industry, your niche. You may stay in the same industry, but is there a different niche that you can target? Is there a subset yeah. of customers that you can design everything in your business to be more boutique, like more catered towards? So you get more of the customers you like and more of the custom less of the few the ones that you don't like. And and and, there, and then there, there's there's uh, one other really big component um, about scaling um, and growth that's that's uh, even more important than, than all these other things. What's that? So it, it's um, it's really knowing where you want to go, ha having um, having a, a vision for where you want to go. And because um, when you got the vision for, like for where you want to go and, and, and the impact you, you, you want to have, then it becomes a lot easier recruiting people and keeping good people. Because when you're when you're now, um, you know, let's, let's say, um, you know, a company wants wants to you know, transform the, you know, the, the uh, weight loss industry, for example. Um, and they, they, they talk about that. Hey, we're out there. We know, you know obesity rates are, are, are on the rise, and we, you know, look at it. You know, and, and we we want to be the company that transforms this. We want we we want people to like feel better about themselves and feel more confident, be able to look in the mirror and feel good and have better, so they'll have better relationships with with, with their husbands or their wives or with their kids or with their whatever. And you know, we're going to transform this. And, you know, and what we're going to take this business is is going it's a billion dollar business, and because there's the market, there's a big market for this, and this is where we're going. And so, so, so when you cast that vision for people, whatever it is, what big or small or whatever it is, it's like. But when you cast that vision, it becomes compelling to people, and then they they, they want to jump on board. And plus, it's like it tells them too. It's like, hey, look, you know what? As we grow, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for you to grow as well. So, so your your opportunity to so you can participate in something very significant, um, and your opportunity to grow in skill set, knowledge, understanding, you know, and, and income is you know is is it's going to be there too provided you know you, you want to and if you don't want to that, that that's fine too you know what i mean um so so communicating that that vision so so then you're attracting people keeping people and 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 they get their buy-in more and then and then the, the other part of that too is is knowing the values of the company um which is company is usually they're just the company is just an, an extension of of the owner of the founder mm -hmm. and and the founder starts, and the founder's got a, a set of um, values, and, and their business is just an extension of that. So typically, what happens is as companies grow, they lose that. They lose the, the, the founder's values, and because because the founder hires somebody, and they abdicate responsibility instead of having like roles responsibilities for that person, they hire somebody, and you know Bob's a good accountant, and then then all of a sudden Bob's answering the phones, and it's like, hey Bob, you know, it's like, hey, why don't you do these sales, and then, hey. We need we need um, more people to do sales. Bob, why don't you hire a salesperson? So now he hires somebody based off of Bob's values, and then and then and then it's like, and then that person he hires is really going to say, hey, you know, um, we want you to be the HR guy, you know, or gal, you know, and, and we want you to do all the hiring, you know. So through abdication, it's, it's like the telephone game we used to play as a kid, you know, where the message is all skewed, you know, like after it's gone around the circle. Um, I heard and, this. I heard that it described to me called the Peter Principle, which is unfortunately derogatory to anyone named Peter. But it's that you, the uh, companies that uh, promote people to their highest level of incompetence. <laughs> it's like, as I like said, like they're good, they're good, you know, they're a good assistant. So they become a sales rep and then they do well as a sales rep. So you, you turn them into a sales uh, trainer and they do well as a trainer. So you turn them into a manager and then they suck as a manager and that's where they stay. Right. But, 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 but what happens that like, like with that um, is as they bring on people, they bring on people that match their values. And and so the founder brings somebody on that matches they feel matches their values closely, and then they abdicate responsibility. You know the Peter principle that you're talking about. So now that person is is, is charged with bring hiring somebody new on. So the new person isn't going to be reflective of the founder. It's going to be reflective of them. Mm. And then that new person, if they're a manager and they're going to hire somebody in, that new person they hire in is going to be reflective of the manager, not a, not of of uh, that first person that, that the founder. And definitely not of the founder's values. Mm. So, so the more a company grows, the the more that they. So it's like if you start on a path, you know, and you start veering off a degree, 
well, then that degree turns to three degrees, four degrees, five, and then pretty soon you're 90 degrees off path. Mm. And then and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, this isn't what we're all about. And, you know, and then they, they have to slam on the brakes and do some massive course correction. Mm -hmm. So so to avoid all that, you very clearly identify, you know, your values and what the company stands for, um, you know, and what we're all about. So, you know, we're about, you know, this is what's important, honesty and integrity, not, you know, maybe, maybe it's not positiveness. Maybe we value honesty more than, than things. So we can be open and honest in our communication about stuff. And we stand for integrity. We stand for doing the right thing. We stand for hard work. We're, we're competitive. We're w whatever those things are. These, these are the core values of the company. So when you're, so when you're, when you're looking to fill these positions to systematize client fulfillment, uh, lead conversion, lead generation, as, as you're defining the roles and responsibilities and then hiring the people in, you're talking about the vision, they're getting excited and you know, Hey, by the way, these are our values. And so you're making sure that the people match your values. If they don't match your values, then it's better, probably it's better not to hire them. Um, because what you want to have is you want, if you want to have, um, uh, I, I had a friend that, that raced outriggers, you know, these, these like Hawaiian, like canoes basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and they would do these races from, from, uh, uh, the coast of California here to Catalina Island. I don't know what's that, 25 miles or something like that. Something like that. And yeah, and, and so so that they have a team of I don't even know how many people on the team. Say 10 people. I don't, I don't know what the number is, but but you you want to have all 10 people with their oars in the water. But more important is you want to have all the oars in the water and all pulling in the same direction. So so if you've got people with conflicting values and they don't they, they don't match the values of of the uh, of the company of the founder. Then it's just the equivalent of having these oars all pulling in different directions. So you know you're going to be working hard and you know sweating a lot, and but you're not going to go anywhere. So if you got all the oars in the water pulling in the same direction, hey, that's our vision. That's where we're going. These are our core values. This, this is what we're all about. If if you match, come along with us. If if not, hey, you're you're going to be miserable here. Right. Um, you know, and I'd rather you not be miserable. I'd rather you be fulfilled. You know, and find some place that that'd be more fulfilling to you. Yeah, hands so. down, hands down. Chris, this has been such a fantastic call. People will definitely want to listen to this more than once. I hope you took notes. I took a ton of notes myself. Uh, Chris, I always love chatting. I feel like we're, we're birds of the same feather. Um, so I always value and appreciate your insight. Now, before I ask for the fellow, for the listeners where to get in touch with you, is there anything I didn't ask you I should have asked you? Um, no, I, I think... Uh... Um, oh yeah, yeah. You, you didn't ask me who my favorite hockey team is. <laughs> Who's your favorite hockey team? The Toronto Maple Leafs. What? So, so Go they, Toronto. They, it's they painful. stunk. So they stunk forever, <laughs> and I've been a loyal fan my whole entire life. Last year they won the Stanley Cup. Was the year I was born. So you can look that up. Find out how old I am. Um, and, and then uh, and now they're good. So so I, I I like to talk about them any, any opportunity I get. So. Right, right. Hey, they they invested the time. They they seeded the players. They they invested in talent. Sure. You know, knowing it was going to take a season or two to turn them around, uh, and develop them. And I guess it's paying off. Well, well, you know, and I love the business analogy, like from that, because they 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 were a storied franchise and very well respected, and then they became like nobody like teams would laugh. Like they're coming into town. Teams would stay out past curfew. You know, they'd, they'd be at the bar. Yeah, we got Toronto tomorrow. Yeah, let's do another round. Right. Um, right. And, and so, so, so when, when they when they came in, th what they did, um, the, the, the person that they hired, Brendan Shanahan, to take over the hockey operations. He goes, you know what? He goes, we're gonna. He cast the vision. We're gonna turn the, this this into a storied franchise. You know, into people that a franchise that's respected and 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 be revered and, and people will, will like pay attention to us. And then, they, then what they said, they said, okay, if you're going to play on this team, um, there's there's three things you got to have. Is one, you obviously have to be good at your position. Mm -hmm. Number two, no, no cancer. You got to be a good person, meaning you got to be good in the locker room and good in front of the media. And number three, you got to be hardworking. If you're not one of these three things, then it's it's going to be miserable for you, and and we're we're going to try to find a uh, a good team to uh, to trade you to. And so they cast the vision. They identified the, their their core values and people, and then they built their systems, and very quickly they went from a losing team to to one of the best teams in the league. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's right. Process. Process is so important. Process. 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 process right. And work. Right. Yeah. And work, <laughs> which is the unsexy part. So. So all right, Chris. For those who have been listening to this, who really have, are vibing with you and feel like they want to get in touch and ask you some more questions, or maybe even work with you, what are some of the best ways to get involved? Yeah, best best way is um, 
the I've got a visual like it's about a four minute video that um, I went over on on like how to build these scalable selling systems in place. That's a great place to start because it, it'll probably be a lot clearer than than me uh, mumbling and bumbling like like a, on an audio. Um, so you can go to my website, Chris Goegan, C H R I S Goegan G O E G A N dot com forward slash scale S C A L E. So chrisgoegan.com forward slash scale, and there's a uh, uh, video that 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 will uh, you know much more clearly and succinctly like give you a visual and explain like how to build these selling systems. If they want to get in touch with me, that you know that they can uh, you know do so on you know on that page there. I think there's um, so contact info. Perfect. So go to chrisgoegan.com. C H R I S G O E G A N dot com. Check out his site. Chris, thank you so much for coming. It's always an honor and pleasure. I definitely want to get you back in the near future. Um, yeah, just thank you so much, man. I appreciate your time coming and sharing with us. And uh, again, those of you listening, if you enjoyed this, definitely reach out to Chris and give him a call. Awesome. Hey, hey thanks, Daryl. Thank, and thanks for allowing me to come on. You've reached the end of our interview. Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, what can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success. So please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself. And remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.